Good morning. It's nine o'clock here in San Diego, so we'll begin today's webinar. This is the third webinar in our Cheminformatics series. Today's webinar will be based on library enumeration using Molsoft's ICM Chemist software. My name is Andrew Ori, and if you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to email or call. During the webinar, you can use the text messaging panel to ask questions, and I'll try to answer them during the webinar or at the end of the webinar. Uh, you can watch a recording of this webinar on YouTube, and uh, we provide a 30-day ICM Chemist license to anybody who wants to to use them and the files for today's webinar can be downloaded from here and I'll be sending an email with this link and instructions on how to get your ICM chemist license after the webinar. So today's topics include chemical, it's based around chemical library enumeration so there's a couple of ways to do that in ICM chemist. One is by sketching a Marcuse structure shown here and adding R group substituents, R1, R2. Another approach is to sketch a reaction, which we'll cover. And you have, so you have reactants and products. And, and then we're going to show how to filter the library that you, uh, you produce and how to uh, uh, optimize it in terms of parameters such as uh, Lipinski's rules and uh, some CNS-based uh, rules. So we're going to go from enumerating the library to filtering it to analyzing the library. So today's example, uh, we're going to enumerate a combinatorial library by the um, cycloaddition of azides and acetylene groups, shown here. It's quite a, a a useful example because um, many of the starting mono substituted, um, substituted alkynes and organic azides are commercially available so you can go to a easily go to a, um, a, a, a database and download this download these uh, starting points and obviously many others can be synthesized with a wide range of functional groups and the cycle addition reaction gives rise to this uh, triazole shown here. So we're going to do some, uh, approach it in two different ways, as I said, one using Marcouche and the other uh, using uh, a reaction. So for both approaches, our starting point would be a spreadsheet, a chemical spreadsheet of chemicals. So they could be from the SYNC database or some other commercial database. Uh, we also, at Molsoft, we compile a database called Molcart Compounds, which is a uh, a database of commercially available compounds from about 30 different uh, popular vendors which is kept up to date. So once you have that database you can then search that database for matching chemistry related to the reaction that you want to to, to look at and then you, you, you take this chemistry and you break down the original building blocks into matching fragments and then you decompose the library using R groups in this example. We're going to go down this way. So using Marcouche. Then you have a spreadsheet of R groups. So we have a spreadsheet for R1 in this example and a spreadsheet of R groups for R2. And then we enumerate this, li this library using this Marcouche scaffold. And we have the library. For the reaction, uh, you'd sketch the reaction, shown here, and you just run it. You don't have to have a library of R groups. It will automatically extract the R groups from the original building block database. That's so a, a different approach. But you come to the same library, whether you go the Marcuse route or the reaction route. And we'll show both of those examples today. Um, and then you have an enumerated library. It could be very large, so you may want to filter it by certain properties. Uh, you may also want to link to the original source um, spreadsheet so you can see what uh, substituents are forming R1 and R2. And then you may want to analyze it using 
a method called um, multi-parameter optimization scoring. So you can give each um, each chemical that in your library a score based on a number of different properties, such as the Pinsky rule properties or CNS-based um, properties, or your own user-defined properties. Okay, so we're going to leave the PowerPoint and we're going to go into ICM. Okay, so hopefully you can see this spreadsheet. This spreadsheet uh, is a, a spreadsheet I just downloaded from uh, a, a, a commercially available vendor. It contains 45,716 chemicals. It's got a variety of different uh, columns with other uh, uh, useful information in them. Uh, but we're going to use this as our starting point. And as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at that, uh, the cycloaddition of azide and acetylene groups. So it'll be useful to be able to, the well, first step we need to do is, is, is find uh, in this database all the azides, for example. Actually, we'll start with, um, uh, we'll search first for the acetylene groups. So to search this uh, table, we click on this button here, which has a ring and a pair of binoculars. And it opens this uh, dialog box, this, uh, this window, which you can use for sketching. So we're going to sketch the acetylene group. We've got a triple bond here. And if I did a search here, it would search for all these triple bonds. But I want to add some, uh, some filters to the search. I want to say that I want this, um, this atom to be connected as drawn. So we right click on the atom and we choose connectivity and choose as drawn. So you can see that we have a, a filter here, it says carbon, it's got to be a carbon, and it's D1 is our code for um, as drawn, the connectivity as drawn. So it's going to find the acetylene group. And then we have to tell ICM which uh, table, you could search a file if you had it on a local, if it was a very large file, you couldn't read it into ICM or, or uh, on a separate machine, you can search by file. But we're going to search the table called building blocks and the column we're searching is the mole column. We're going to search by substructure and we're going to save the results to a new table called result. Okay, search. And we get a table with all our, with all the compounds in that original building blocks that have an acetylene group. You can see our search query on the right hand side if you want to just make sure. It's sometimes useful to right click on your search query here and choose align by scaffold. That means that all our, our search scaffold are all aligned. So all the acetylenes are lined up in, in, in uh, above each other in the in the depiction, in the 2D depiction here. I was going to rename the result table, right click on it and say rename result. I'm going to say acetylene okay, okay and then I need to do the same thing with the azide so uh, I need to sketch the the azide go to the chemical search window again and I want to extract all the azides from the building blocks database I have so I go to this ring with the, oh, sorry, the wrong one uh, the ring with the um, binoculars and then we just uh, sketch the azide query. And once again, I want to say that I want this nitrogen connected with no additional heavy atoms. And I say, say connectivity as drawn. And the table we're searching is building blocks, column mole again by substructure. And we're going to return it to a table a local ta uh, table inside ICM, but you could save it uh, externally if you wanted to and just go search. Okay, so once again, we have our query on the right hand side. We have our azides, so all the chemicals in the in the original building blocks table with azides. And it's going to right click and say align by scaffold again so we can see those groups. Okay. So now we're 
going to what we call uh, decompose this library. So we have a library here of acetylenes. Actually, I'm going to first rename this result as well. Result, these are the, um, the azides. So we have, we have uh, two libraries, one with azides and one with acetylenes. And if you remember the Marcouche, this, we're going to first um, enumerate this library by Marcouche. So we need to make these points here as attachment points. And so we need to decompose this library uh, based on this acetylene uh, and, um, and decompose it and get a, a, a library of attachment points that we can use to enumerate the, the, the library by Marcuse structure. So to do that, we need to first um, sketch the azide again. And actually, the azide is the R2. So you, we sketch the azide, and then we can add a, a bond here, and then right-click on the atom and say element R2. Okay, so it's going to go through this database of this small ta this table that we extracted from the building blocks and match this we'll see we'll see the result we're going to first save this as the going to save this to a chemical spreadsheet so we have we sketch it um, and then we click on this uh, button here with a spreadsheet and a ring and we can say this is the acetylene scaffold yeah, okay so now we have another table here with acetylene scaffold. And so now we have three, uh, lots of tables in this uh, webinar, so um, keep track of this. Um, so now we have this acetylene scaffold here. And we're going to use this scaffold to decompose this library, this, this acetylene library. And we'll see the result in a minute. So we go to chemistry, and we go to SAR analysis, and we choose R group decomposition. We could use this window to sketch this again, but we've already sketched it. So we, we say, choose table with scaffold. The scaffold is the acetylene scaffold. And the table for decomposition is this result underscore acetylene. This is the one we're going to decompose based on this scaffold. And the mole column is the column containing the 2D sketch. These other options uh, we'll be covering next week, which has more to do with um, building SAR tables when, once you have some activity data. Um, so we just go OK. And you see now we have our original um, acetylene database, but it's been broken down, decomposed, uh, based on our search. And so at each point where the acetylene was, we have this asterisk, which, which is going to be the attachment point to our Marcus structure. Okay, so this is our R2s. And the azide is actually the R1, so we have to do the same thing for the azide. So we go to the, the sketch uh, button, not the search, the sketch one next to it, and we sketch the azide again, and use that. We need to define, in this case, the R1 position. Um, sorry. Okay, so R1 will be here. So we use the single bond, click on the N, then right-click on the atom, choose element R1. Okay. So now, once again, we need to save this to a chemical spreadsheet. So we click on the... Um, the uh, the spreadsheet button here and give the name so this is the uh, azide scaffold and go OK so now we have the azide scaffold and now we need to decompose the our data our, our small table of azides called result this table here with the azides we're going to decompose it based on this um, Marcus structure. So we go to chemistry and then we go to SAR again, analysis, R group decomposition. Uh, we can choose table with scaffold again. So the scaffold is the azide scaffold. The index actually, I didn't explain, but that's just um, 
one it just represents the row number so um, we, you could have multiple uh, sketches here and you could choose row number two if there was that or whatever but um, we only have one so it's one uh, the table for decomposition is not result acetylene it's results azides and then the column is more we do that again and now we have a new table here as well so that's going to move these over so we have we have two tables one with the uh, fragments we generated from the acetylene scaffold here and ones that we gen generated from the azide scaffold so these these can be used so we're going to in a minute we're going to draw the the um, the, the triazole and we're going to enumerate the library and place these onto that scaffold but first it's always useful to uh, know where when you're building the the combinatorial library it's good to know where your substituents have come from so I'm just going to give these uh, these 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 um, these scaffolds a these substituents a name so we're just going to give them an ID so I'm going to right click and say calculate insert column on the the R2 here and I'm going to choose function so here you can add a variety of different properties if you wanted to you can perform transformations ar ar arithmetic and mathematical um, analysis of anything in the table but we're just going to use the the new option and choose new ID and this is um, sorry it's gonna it's gonna get one table at a time so if you double click it brings them back to the high one. So I'm going to right click again, choose calculate insert column function new ID. And this will give our, um, I'm just going to give the ID R1 ID and it's going to start at number one and give each one a unique ID. So we have this ID column here now. And the same for the R2s. I'm going to just going to right click on the substituent column header and say insert column function new ID and this is R2 so I'm just going to call it R2 ID start at number one okay, okay so now we have a reference point we can always find these structures again by linking the tables and we'll, we'll show that in a minute okay so we're basically set up now for uh, for generating a library based on Marcouche because we have all our R1s with attachment points we have all our R2 groups with attachment points the final piece of the puzzle is the uh, uh, the triazole that um, which is our Marcuse structure which we're going to use to, to generate the library so once again we go to um, we go to the sketch button here and we can sketch the, the triazole ring with the R1s and R2 uh, on it so we click on the five-membered ring. Click here. Uh, I'm just going to. You can use you can use keyboard shortcuts for certain things. Um, just to speed up the process. And oh, sorry. Okay, and then this atom here. This is going to be our R1 group. So once again, element R1. And here we have the R2. So right click element R2. Okay, and we need to save this to a spreadsheet again, a chemical table. So uh, we just click on the append this button, the append molecule to chemical table. I was going to give it a, a new name, a separate table. You can append it to any of the current tables, but um, I'm just going to call it scaffold because this is our main Marcouche scaffold that we're going to use. Okay, okay. All right. So now we have all the pieces of our puzzle. We we have the uh, the Marcouche structure where we're defining where we want to add R ones and R twos. We have already built now our databases of a database of R one substituents. And next to it, we have a database of R2 substituents. And so now we're ready to enumerate the, the library. So 
we go to chemistry and then we have the combinatorial chemistry tools here so we can choose the option enumerate by scaffold you can see the one below which I'll show at the end called enumerate by reaction which we'll do later but we'll enumerate by scaffold and it says choose table with scaffold or you can sketch the scaffold we've already sketched it so the scaffold is Marcouche scaffold and the index is one we only have one row so we go OK and then the next uh, dialog box is asking you to define which table contains your R1 or R2 you can obviously have more than one substituent you can have R3, R4, R5 and you, this would be populated by different uh, columns but we only have in our case two uh, so we have R1 so the R1 is this one R underscore R1 mole these are the decomposed library that we produced and then the same with the R2 so we get to so drop down find R2 so now we have the two uh, the two tables and if you remember we, we labeled them we gave each one a label so you can have as many labels as you want but um, we're going to use the drop down one and find the ID column which is this R underscore R1 ID and the same with R2 R underscore I2 and it's got the ID so we can always so when we enumerate the library it's going to label each compound where where the came from so we go enumerate and this will build our library so this is our library based on that Marcouche and we have the R1, R2 group here and the R1 group here so this library that we've constructed has uh, 1044 rows so it's a, a quite a reasonable size library um, and we also can see that we have the IDs here we, we can then link these IDs to our original scaffold substituent table so we can see um, so we can see which um, substituent was used to, to make this um, to generate this molecule so to do that we right click on the column header and there's a there's an option at the bottom so called link to other table so this will this will give you the option to link to any of your currently open tables and this is r1 so we're going to go down to find the table called r1 and we're going to link to the id in r1 in match your match and so we go okay so now we have these these blue hyperlinks and we do the same for the r2 right click on the R2 choose link to other table and we go down to uh, the R2 ID here in table R2 it's basically this one here and the ID will match this will match that so we go OK and the hyperlinks will enable you to so you can just single click on a hyperlink so this hyperlink and we can see that this is the substituent that was used at R1 in this molecule so you can do it on both just click and it will take you to that point okay so we have quite a, a large table so I want to just show how you could filter this table uh, when you enumerate the library. So to do that, um, we, we need to go back to our original enumeration, go chemistry, uh, combinatorial, chemist um, combinatorial chemistry, and enumerate by scaffold. And we were going to use the Marcouche scaffold again, so it's the same library we're just going to filter it while it's um, so it'll, fil it'll filter the library on the fly according to some parameters that we en enter we go okay so it's asking us r1 r2 again and we're going to give the labels here and then we can add some conditions so this is our filters so we can say um, for example uh, mole weight if you start typing it will give you a list of the uh, functions that you can use so there's quite a few different uh, functions you could use a prediction of Herg or Payne's 
uh, per surface area, but we're using molecular weight, so I'm just going to click on that. And we do molecular weight of the mole column that we construct. <clears throat> and we say it would be less than maybe 300. And then we use ampersand. And then we have a, another one. We could say that we want the R2 groups to be um, aliphatic. So we can say is aliphatic. Okay, and then we say R2. We want R2 to be aliphatic. And then the final uh, condition, we could say uh, number of hydrogen bond acceptors in the mole column. Hopefully you can see this. Oh, it's pretty small. Uh, and less than 10. But in this dialog box, it shows you some other things. You could say, I don't want R1 to equal R2, for example, so you get a unique R groups. Um, and there's some other parameters, but you can, we have some documentation on this on different um, conditions that you can use. So this is our, our conditions, so we just enumerate. And this brings us to a much smaller table. You can see that we have aliphatic groups only in the R1 position, or the R2, sorry, the R2 position here in our new smaller table. We only have, actually, in this filtered one, seven, seven chem chemicals. So that's going to get rid of this. So this is our, 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 small, our smaller table. And this is our enumerated library. So it's kind of gone through the whole process on how to filter and enumerate your library. You can actually um, save filters in your Marcouche structure here. If you right click and you can say uh, edit Marcouche and then you can use these filters um, I should have copied it. So you, if you do that, then it saves it inside your Marcouche. So whenever you use this this Marcouche structure again, it will keep those those filters. So it's listed in your in your Marcouche. Okay, so we have our enumerated results. We may want to. So the next step would be to, we filtered, so the next step is analysis. And one way to do that, to, to look at the properties of these, you can, you can always go to chemistry, calculate properties, and calculate log P, solubility, and other things, and then do some plots or whatever. Um, but sometimes it's useful to look at multiple parameters and score them uh, in one go. So we go to, so for this table, we go to um, chemistry, and we use MPO, which stands for multi-parameter optimization. And there's a button called create new multiple parameter optimization score. So we click on that. Um, it's asking us for a name for the column. Uh, I was going to call it my MPO. We have inbuilt some already pre-prepared scores, which you can actually modify for some basic things like the Pinsky rules, uh, CNS. And you can also generate your own um, set of rules as well. And just go OK. And this opens up this uh, separate side panel here. So you can see for the Pinsky's rules, we have log P, we have weight, molecular weight, hydrogen bond donor, hydrogen bond acceptor. And you can add additional parameters if you wanted to. And this uh, this gives you a some you know some upper and lower limit lower limits for for the score for the so you want log P a five would be a high log P low zero. Uh, 500, these are the Pinsky drawers, 500 zip. But you can play around with this, you can edit this and adjust it to your desired um, range. And you can also change the weighting as well. So if, if molecular weight is not as, as much of a important, then you can lower the weighting of that and it would, you will see it reflected in the final score. So it's asking us on the, this panel here, the table that we want to calculate this multi-parameter multi-parameters for, and that is um, enumerate result one. And we can just click, I'll say apply to um, enum enumerate result one. And this is this is the application. So you just go calculate here. And then you can see in our small database, we have this column 
called my MPO bars, and there's you have, we have a score called my MPO. So if we sort this column by score, uh, this 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 molecule has a four because it has it matches very well the log p molecular weight number of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors. And if we go down to the bottom, uh, this one is 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 not too good on the hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, but reasonable on log p and weight. So you can easily, if you had a very big table, you can easily scroll through this. You can sort, and you can find the the parameters, find the chemicals that match um, certain parameters that you're you're interested in. So once you've enumerated your library, uh, you can right click on your library and say save as and save it as STF if you want to load it into some other software or you can save it file save project as dot ICB and then you can share this using the free ICM browser so your colleagues in the lab could um, open this file exactly as it is and see your analysis and your chemicals that you you want to be synthesized uh, you can also right click and say export to HTML and this will, I will show you I think in the first webinar of the series you can have a chemical table in HTML that you can sort and with the 2D sketch in it and you can also export to Excel. Okay. So I, ha I have a couple of questions but um, I'm going to think I'll get to them at the end. Um, so the final example as I mentioned in the, in the PowerPoint is you can do all this actually using a reaction and it's actually a little bit uh, quicker and more straightforward because you don't have to uh, generate the R groups it will do that automatically so to do to do to to enumerate by reaction we go to the chemical sketch button here and we actually have our product already drawn this is our product and so we need to draw the reactant so we have need to draw the uh, the acetylene, which actually has the R2 here, okay. and we need to draw the other reactant, which is the azide, and add our R1 group to that here. So you right click on the atom, choose R1. You can use the keyboard as well. And um, I'm just going to separate the, these two. So then you need to separate the reactants from the product with a arrow shown here. So it's going to automatically know these are the reactants, whatever's this side of the, um, the arrow. Let me move it a little further away just to be sure. So let me move the arrow back. Um, you can use the middle mouse button to, to do that. So we have the reactants, we have the products. We can save this to a chemical spreadsheet again. Call this our reaction. Go OK. Just going to get rid of this table. So we have our reaction here. So um, now we can just apply this reaction and enumerate our library based on this reaction. We have the R2 defined, the R1, and also on the product we have the, the R1 and R2. So to do that we go to uh, chemistry, uh, combinatorial chemistry, and um, enumerate by uh, reaction. And there's a similar dialog box as for the Marcouche. Um, you need to choose the table with reaction, so it's this one. And just go, you could also draw it in this box, but we were pre -drew, pre we drew it beforehand. We go OK. We can um, actually this we can actually just not worry about the R2 and R1s, we can just say building blocks, we can go to our original larger database and it will automatically match and decompose and join um, without generating the R1s, R2s, so you can do that. Um, and then um, I'm going to remove the filter. And there's some of the options you can choose um, here. 
uh, you can have the labels as well but um, if we're doing it from the building blocks um, the original table that we we had you just go create and modify and that will run the enumeration so you can see we, we have the, the enumerated library immediately based on the building blocks okay. so um, just to finally um, you may we in the next uh, webinar where we're looking at structure activity relationship data uh, we're obviously going to have different uh, additional columns here with activity and uh, things like that too so sometimes it's useful when not only we have the um, so I was looking for the table. So here we have the the ID, and we can link and show it. But it might be nice to have the the actual table. Um, sorry. It might be nice to, to in the table to have the the R1 and R2 displayed in this in the same table. So to do that, uh, you can actually go to Tools and go to Table, and then you can append. Um, Add external columns, and uh, then we can show you that we have some options. So the the final table, this is the table we enumerated from the Marcouche. It's called enum underscore result, and the source table we want to bring in the R1, R2 from here, and we're going to match by the ID number. and go OK. So now we have the R1 group shown in the same table here. And then we can do the same with the R2, so we go to Tools, Table, um, append, add, a dish, add an external column. Our target table is the one we're working on, which is called Enum Results, and the column is Mole. Uh, by column, um, we want to do it by R2 ID. We're going to match by the ID, and the um, we want to get the substituent from the R2 table and also matched by ID number and go OK so now we have the so for each chemical that we enumerated we have uh, we have the R2 group and the R1 uh, displayed so you can sort the table by R1 if you wanted to or R2 just click on the table here show the final slide so uh, this that that ends the webinar thank you very much for your attention um, sorry it's just a lot of spreadsheets <laughs> wasn't anything exciting but um there is the next webinar will be next week where uh, Eugene Rausch who is our principal developer here at Mosa he's going to be talking about structure activity relationship analysis so there is a um, variety of new new tools actually in ICM now for um, plotting R groups uh, and looking at structure activity relationship um, looking for um, activity cliffs and matching match pairs and also predicting uh, finding uh, 2d bio isosteres and finally uh, March the 6th um, if you're in the Southern California area we're holding a one-day workshop um, in LA uh, which will cover molecular graphics, cheminformatics, uh, docking and modeling and um, using the 3D uh, ligand editor uh, which we developed with Novartis um, for lead optimization purposes. So it's a one day workshop if anybody is around this area in March the 6th. That's a free workshop. So thank you very much um, for your attention and I'll try and cover some